This Kelloland Living segment is sponsored by Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen area. Inspiring and enabling all young people, especially those most in need of services, to realize and develop to their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens. Growing up, having the space to learn and grow was crucial, and no one has a better understanding of that than our next guest. We're being joined by, via Zoom by the Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen Area Director of Development, Brian Kreish. Brian is joining us all the way from Aberdeen to help us understand how the Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen Area serves more than 1,000 youth in the Aberdeen area and beyond and provides a place for kids to go after school, during school breaks, and during the summer to grow beyond the classroom. Our young people are tomorrow's leaders, innovators, and problem solvers. But too many kids don't have a safe place to go after school, aren't sure where their next meal will come from, and often don't have the support they need to prepare for college or a career. Your donation to the Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen area will give children a safe place to go, healthy meals, mentors, and meaningful life experiences. Together, let's give our kids the support they need today to make their great future possible tomorrow. Thank you for giving generously. Hi, Brian. Thank you so much for joining us here today via Zoom. Thank you for having me. All the way from thank Aberdeen. You. Yeah, thank you. So, Brian, that really gave us a good insight look into, you know, the need for this. But tell me more about your mission and what you really provide. Sure. Well, I guess just going back a little bit, you know, just give you, give you a little bit of history. Uh, the Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen, we've been around for 53 years. Uh, we uh, started out... Uh, in 1970, when Brown County donated a 1930s WPA uh, County Roads Maintenance Facility to the club. Uh, from there, obviously, we've grown and grown and grown. Uh, we were in that, in that building till 2017. So in 2011, we realized that we were outgrowing that facility. There was a lot of safety issues and things. Uh, we kicked off a capital campaign, a $6 million capital campaign for a new facility, which we built right next door. Um, we successfully raised those funds and in June of 2017, we uh, moved into the new facility. Uh, currently, we're serving uh, about uh, 1,000 uh, youth from the community and from the surrounding counties annually. Uh, we are uh, open Monday through Friday during the school year, 3 to 6.30, and then uh, we're open all no school days and throughout the summer month, uh, 7.30 to 6 p.m. It gives uh, those working families an opportunity to have a safe place for their kids to be and uh, an enriching environment for them to learn and grow uh, during, them, uh, out of, during the out-of-school hours. Tell me um, more about the importance, too, for having an enriching environment. Yeah, well, you know, for your community, it's just uh, it's a great thing for youth. It keeps them out of trouble. It uh, gives them that safe place. It gives them a positive environment. Uh, they've got positive youth mentors that they can um, um, relate to and cling to and and uh, look up to. Uh, but it just gives uh, some of these kids, you know, uh, we, we, we serve a, a wide uh, demographic. Uh, so, the, you know, a lot of those kids who don't have those those um, opportunities at home or outside the club, they come here and we provide those we provide those opportunities, field trips, uh, get them out in the community doing fun things. Uh, but also the, the main thing is those relationships that they're creating and developing, uh, as well as character and leadership development skills and all those things that we're doing here at the club. Tell me about the core programs you offer as well. Sure. Well, we offer the five core programming areas. Um, and uh, within those core programming areas, there's a lot of different things. So we do like passport to manhood. We do smart moves. We do uh, anti-tobacco programming. We do uh, different arts and crafts projects, uh, STEM programming. Uh, the list goes on and on. We've got a fantastic programming staff here at the club. Uh, they do great things with the kids, keeps it interesting, keeps it exciting, keeps them engaged. Uh, so, you know, they're not just sitting in the corner with their with their electronic devices, burning the day away. Uh, we keep them busy. We keep them moving. We keep them engaged. You told us in the beginning a little bit about the club's growth. So with this growth and sustainability, I mean, what do you see for the future? Well, so, you know, that's kind of the thing is, is when we moved into the new facility, we uh, had been experiencing such significant growth. In fact, since 2011, when we kicked off that ca campaign, 
Uh, we've seen uh, about a 200% increase in our average daily attendance. Uh, right now we're averaging about 265 kids a day. Um, uh, prior to the COVID pandemic, we really saw a lot of growth and it kind of stepped back a little bit, uh, but now we're seeing that growth that we had experienced prior to the pandemic. Um, so, you know, now we're in that situation where we're looking into the future. How do we provide um, uh, better services, better programming, uh, more programming, uh, more benefit to the community. So uh, we're, we're also kicking off an endowment campaign, which will help us with that sustainability piece. Uh, you know, if a, if a HVAC unit goes out or, or something like that, basically something that we can help sustain the club into the future uh, to help us for those unforeseeable expenses. Uh, but, you know, we've had great support from the community over the years. Uh, in fact, unbelievable support from the community, individuals, businesses, uh, state, local foundations. Um, uh, lots of great support that's helped push us where we're at today. Uh, with the growth that we've seen, it's just been incredible to see the level of support from our, from our community. And with that campaign, too, that's one way by donating people can get involved, but also volunteering. I mean, what opportunities do you have to make this an even better place? Well, lots of volunteer opportunities, in fact, uh, daily, you know, I mean, uh, volunteers can come in and just read a book to a kid or play pool or um, help our janitorial staff. Um, uh, lots of different things they can do, but we've also got fundraising events that help us fund the things that we do. Uh, for example, we've got uh, our annual banquet coming up here in February, February 10th. We have uh, former club alumni, uh, former Buffalo Bill and uh, NFL Hall of Famer Andre Reed coming to speak at our annual banquet. That's uh, an event that helps us recognize the outstanding youth and staff and volunteers in the community. Um, we do uh, a wine and uh, uh, culinary event in the end of March, which is a great fundraiser for the club. Uh, we do a golf tournament in June. Uh, we also do the Brown County Fair grandstand concessions. We operate all the grandstand concessions. So it sounds concessions. like you have a lot of stuff you're offering. Thank you so much, Brian, for coming on today and telling us all about this to give us more information so that we can get involved as well. Yeah, thanks. Appreciate having us. The Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen area is a recipient of a 2023 tradition of Caring Grant. You can find them at 1121 First Avenue Southeast in Aberdeen. Learn more online at bgcaberdeen.org or by phone at 605-225-8714. The Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen area is all about creating a place where every kid feels safe and connected, a place to belong and a place to become. This Kelloland Living segment has been sponsored by Boys and Girls Club of Aberdeen area, inspiring and enabling all young people, especially those most in need of services, to realize and develop to their full potential as productive, responsible, and caring citizens.